What's going on Toy Fan? Project Piper Customs here and welcome back to a long overdue episode of The Custom Cave. Not the episode I wanted to bring you straight away but you know things happen but I did want to get one to you as soon as and I have been tinkering in the cave especially what you can see in front of you with some Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle stuff the 30th anniversary this year and uh, yeah so I just wanted to flick on the camera and show you what I've been getting up to so what can you see in front of you well you can see Raph is holding something obscure you can see Casey doesn't have his mask and uh, there's a weird box in front of Donnie and his bandana is doing something strange <laughs> so let's get into it all all right so obviously first out the bat we're going to start with Raphael now the one thing I do love about customizing is not only you can customize figures as I said before you can customize your own props and obviously Necker are doing a very good job of giving us some awesome props from the movie that we didn't think we would get especially in the accessory pack um, but there are obviously some from certain scenes within the movie and you know I love to shoot scenes from the movie that you know they're, they're just hard to come by you know even when we go accessory hunting for we know real other figures there's just some that you can't find a, a particular accessory of so you make one instead all right and as you can see with Raph he is holding an apple a pretty much eaten apple just like from the scene in the movie all right so let's bring him forward and let's take a closer look okay all right so there we are as you can see i've gone for a i'm not sure what the particular style of apple it is but in the movie obviously it's a yellow bit greenish depending on the lighting it's very hard to tell uh from the still but uh, i've decided to go for uh the red because reds are my favorite so it's kind of my own little touch on it um but yeah so let's pull it off which can just come out like so let's take a closer look okay all right so as you can see all right this is a solid sculpt okay so i used a uh, oven baked clay called super sculpey let's get you in focus all right and uh yeah so this was pretty simple and quite a fun one to do obviously you just get a small chunk of uh, super sculpey and you just sort of keep ma manipulating it into shape uh, and obviously with a half eaten apple you want that sort of cone that funnel where it, it's a bit thicker at the top and then slims down to the bottom uh, cylindrical shape and i used my two favorite sculpting tools which are right here okay so we've got a flat tip and a pointed tip okay and yeah so once i'd had the general shape in let's just switch hands because i'm a righty all right it was simple matter of uh, getting that sort of bite mark texture all right in which i just used the flat tip and i just stippled it like this okay so just pushed it in getting those dents in okay and when it came to the rear edge uh, i sort of just pushed the clay up so it formed that edge pretty simple okay and um, what I did for the stalk, which is also what I used to hold this whilst I sculpted, is um, I basically used a toothpick. Okay, so I just shoved a toothpick in and that gave me the ability to hold it as I sculpted. Okay, so doing all of that, getting all the texture down, getting all the details down. All right, flipped it over at the end and I used the pointed tip one, which is here. Okay, and I just just went mental pushing it in a bit okay getting all that in just so it looked like the the base of the core flipping it over to this side all right and obviously as the toothpick was already in uh, i just sort of manipulated it in so it gave you that nice sort of curved indentation all the way in like that removed the toothpick and then glued it in snipped off the end and that became its stalk okay pretty simple and then I just went in with a variety of paints. I used some uh, dark scarlet uh, deco art paint for the top. And I used a banana uh, acrylic color to get that sort of greeny yellow apple look. And then I went in with a, a sort of a, a stone color, just a dry brush. So it gave you that, you know, when an apple, when you get bite marks and the edges of those bite marks kind of go a bit brownish, you know, once you leave an apple for too long, which you can kind of see. Okay, just there. And then just a standard burnt umber brown for the stalk. Okay. And yeah, obviously getting it in scale. You obviously when you're manipulating the sculpt, you just want to, you know, get a feel for um, how the scaling is. And I, I think this scales pretty well. And he is able, as you saw earlier, see if I can do this on camera, to just pinch it on the stalk like that. Okay. Oh, it is a little bit fiddly. But if you can get that sweet spot, and it'll hold it quite nice, just like that. 
okay and this is a great little prop you know just random not every figure there's not going to be loads of scenes where you're going to need a half-eaten apple obviously for the scene i want to shoot in the movie is that very scene so yeah i needed one and it was a bit of fun okay uh, and yeah so whilst i had the sculpt out and i was on a, having a blast having a roll uh, I moved on to another scene that I really wanted to shoot and uh, I didn't know exactly how I was going to go about it. Okay, so I tried looking online, which is, of course is the Donatello getting his head dunked into the fish tank. And um, if you notice in this screenshot that there's uh, an assortment of um, fish tank ornaments. Okay, and I had a look online because you know I love my movie accuracy to see if there were any that I could get that small that looks kind of similar. Um, and I sort of gave up in the end. I couldn't really find anything that was working for me. So I thought, Ben, do you know what? Sod it. You got the sculpt work out. Let's just sculpt them. All right. And that's what we have right here. So let me bring this thing forward. All right. So I've kind of have it set up in this uh, hazed container, which is actually a, um, a cotton bud, you know, Q tip for your ears uh, container from then. So it's got that hazed sort of look. Um, basically, just giving you the illusion that, you know, there's water in there which will work perfectly. All right, so let's bring this up close. Now, as you can see, I've used a railroad ballast as uh, the gravel at the bottom. Okay, but yes, in the back, we do have the smiling turtle ornament, uh, the skeleton in stone, and then, of course, the black submarine. And I've just used a bit of my, uh, um, which is, it actually is a fish tank prop um, tree stem, which you've seen me using a number of uh, toy shots. I just snipped a branch of that off to act as foliage for within the tank. Okay, and as you can see with the submarine, I've just used a black twisty tie. There goes the stalk, and just wrapped it around the base and around Donnie's stick to give the illusion that it's floating with a uh, a buoy. Okay, so let's look at these one by one. All right, let's start with the yellow submarine or black submarine in this case. All right, and again, all of these. Let me just get the light over. There we are. All of these are hand sculpted as well, using again Super Sculpey, the oven baked clay. Let's just unhook that. Okay. And that was just simple again, just rolling it into shape, getting the various uh, shapes you want, sort of getting a feel for the, the, the scaling compared to Donnie's head. And uh, yeah, and that's pretty much it. So just rolled this into some sort of tubes, pinched it at the end, and rolled a couple of other tubes, cut them off, stuck them down to the side sort of pressed on a ball, uh, squared off this chunk, pressed it on, and then of course just uh, rolled up this little portion in the end and plugged it on. And then of course using these uh, wonderful tools. Okay, same thing, get you in focus. Uh, yeah, sort of just got it into the shape that I want. And then it was just a matter of painting. Yeah, obviously oven baked it, and I, I bake all of these in the oven for one at 100 degrees for about 10 minutes as they're small. You know, the more sculpey you use, the, the longer you bake it for. Okay, but as these are small, uh, about 100 degrees for about 10, maybe 15 minutes, and that's it. They'll you know, leave them out to, to cool off, and then they become rock hard. All right, and uh, once they're rock hard, then you begin the paintwork. Okay, and as you can see here, uh, we just have a matte black, um, some silver chrome, a yellow and just a light red okay and then, yeah that that was that that was quite a fun one to do and yeah as you can see you've just got a twisty tie and that just wraps around its bum end and they can just dangle in there as if it's floating all right so let's just pop them to the side and look at the others all right let's look at mr skeleton on a rock uh, this was the first one i did all right this was the first one i did this was quite fun, intricate and you know a bit tough, but it was fun. So again, this is just manipulating the clay into some sort of uh, rock form, using those tools just to push in some texture, rolling some uh, clay up, obviously getting the various shapes. So a little ball for the head, a bigger ball for the midsection, and a few tubes just here and here. And then of course I just went in with a uh, exacto knife or a scalpel and sort of cut in where the ribs would be. You know, gave him sort of a Jack Skeleton from Nightmare Before Christmas face. And yeah, then you got yourself some sort of makeshift skeleton in some rock. And once again, baked it and uh, gave it a paint job. I used an ivory colour for the bone, sort of like an off-white. And then again, stone colour for the base. And uh, yeah, that just helps it prop it up a bit better. Alright, 
So there we go, and that will sit in front of the tank. And here we're going to get to my favourite one, and he's kind of like my unofficial uh, mascot. There we go. Here we go, and here's Mr. Turtle, the smiley face. All right, this was a fun one. When I noticed this was in the back of the fish tank, I just laughed because I never noticed it before. It's those little details that you just miss but then catch on another viewing. Okay, so yeah, this was a fun one. Again, all solid sculpt, and it was just a matter of uh, rolling up different portions into the shapes that you want, sort of manipulating them together. And uh, yeah, this one took a little bit longer, sort of getting this edge. This is a one piece. This wasn't, I didn't just uh, add the edge to this. This is a one piece. So using the tools to try and manipulate the... Uh, that roll it into an edge and get this lip was uh, was quite tough but the head and the neck as you can see are just two lumps of sculpt the tail and then of course the feet and uh, these two bits were added afterwards when I realized the whole thing was just top heavy so it's uh, the two little bits under his foot you know keep it upright and then it was just a matter of adding the detail on the face which again I used uh, uh, this tool the pointed one and just went in and just sort of went like that and it gives you that indentation and then of course around the eyes okay and then once it was all cooked and cured and then was the fun part of painting it all right and yeah just put my line work skills to the test getting uh, good circles and that was again of just you know if it bled over or if I made a mistake I went in with the green sort of tried to correct it if I bled in with the green then I went back in with the black and did that continuously until you get some decent line work all right so use two different shades of green here did the eyes did a wash for the mouth and there we have our own smiling turtle which will just sit nicely in the back okay and yeah that is pretty much everything to do with the uh, uh the fish tank which is pretty cool and i'll give you a look to see just uh just a bit of fun on uh, how it will look with donnie's head let's get that back in dunked in there so yeah and now moving on to donnie obviously because he's getting his head dunked upside down I had to give him the uh, the floating bandana and this is just one of the uh, double double draping bandanas from the new two packs uh, those two packs have not made it over here to the UK yet, but we do have the Casey Jones and uh, Raff in Disguise trench coat um, uh, two packs. Okay, so I've managed to acquire a couple of those, hence why there's another Casey. But the Raff on that does have the uh, the dual sided bandana, so I pinched uh, I pinched it from one of the other Raffs in Disguise I had, sort of uh, gave it a color match of purple, best I could. Okay, and sort of just manipulated it down a bit, um, just so it appeared to be a bit more floaty. And there you have, Donnie's got a floating bandana. All right, and if I can do this on camera. You do, 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 do. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Here's how that looks. Okay, so yeah, this all came together quite nicely. All right, oh, and it will make for a, a good shot. Let's just pop that to one side, and yeah, let's move on to the massive elephant in the room, and that is unmasked Casey Jones. Now, you may have seen a few different artists do them do this themselves on across Facebook and Instagram. Uh, it was first brought up a while ago on Instagram when these two packs were just coming out and someone had taken the mask off and realised there is actually an Elias head sculpt underneath and Elias himself commented this saying that you know it was weird but he has since agreed with Necker to do to put out an unmasked version because he obviously had refused at first and um, that was kind of the first sign that you know he had he'd sort of flipped his decision uh, was on that post and then we saw the finished product and it looked really, really, really good. And to know that it was an Elias head sculpt under there. And uh, yeah, and then other people started doing the same. And there's been some really good ones. There's been some okay ones. Um, but yeah, I thought obviously once I got my second KC, I had to give it a go myself. There was just no way I wasn't. <laughs> and this is my efforts. Now, I'm not 100% happy with this. But, you know, again, as you know, I've said before, uh, head sculpt painting is not my um, strongest uh, area of customizing and it will be the first time that I have ever attempted to sculpt hair So let me bring him forward and I'll show you what I'm on about. Okay All right, so there we have it 
let's get a bit lower down so you can see them. Uh, yeah, so when it came to the unmasking, as you'll see in these pictures, uh, obviously there were some holes that needed filling on the face. That's from where the mask ported in. Now getting this off was was a challenge because it's really glued in there. Even with some heat and hot water, you know, mine, mine particularly was still really, really stuck in there. Unfortunately, I could not salvage the mask. It, I did end up having to break it to get it off, uh, which is a shame. But also in the same time, it's just a cool prop that I can probably use for a beaten and defeated Casey in a you know a unique scene and give it that sort of uh, Batman Dark Knight Rises feel with Bane breaking half the mask off. So yeah, you know I might use that for a later shot. But anyway, once I got the mask off, it was then a matter of dremeling some areas down on the face and on the hair sculpt. The hair sculpt itself had uh, the straps sculpted in so i had to dremel off the straps from the head sculpt and i did that once i got the head cut uh, the head mold you know the hair itself is one piece so i managed to get that off um so it was separate and then i managed to dremel down the straps um but it did leave some trenches obviously to be uh, sculpted in and obviously some holes in the head to be sculpted in and i used a uh for the head i filled them in with um milli put um here we go uh good old milli put this is the terracotta version and yeah so i just uh, filled in those holes sanded them down sanded them back and obviously on the head itself i uh, added in an extra head wrinkle just so it sort of flowed as there was a couple sculpted in there already but this top one here and that one just there before the hairline i just added in myself so it kind of blended in otherwise it would just been flat surface and you know looked like he had botox or something and um yeah got the cheeks um sculpted back and smoothed out okay and then yeah then i used a sculpt work a particular different kind of sculpt for the hair as the hair is a flexible rubber so i needed a flexible putty and the only one really i know on the market is procreate all right now i've used this stuff before and i'm not a fan it's really hard to uh to work with very difficult and um you know I, I dread using it when i need to um but i knew i needed to for this because obviously the hair's above a piece and the putty needs to be flexible otherwise it's just going to crack okay so it's a two-part epoxy and you want to mix it in with a there's a dark and a gray let's pop it open all right so you've got the dark and the light and you want normally when you have epoxy parties to mix in with sculpting you want an even ratio you want an even amount of each and then you roll them together and mix it in uh, to get the flexibleness um, for it to, to cure flexible you need um, more of the dark and then a small amount of this one and you mix it in and then when it cures it's flexible okay so i yeah use that and again, first time sculpting with hair and knowing how difficult this is stuff this stuff is to work with, uh, mainly because it's very tough to blend in. It's almost like trying to sculpt rubber. Okay, it's very very difficult to actually get it to blend in smooth. Um, so yes, yeah, so that's when I started filling in the uh, the areas where the, the the strap was. So obviously you get the back, and I used a uh, exacto knife just to to cut in the hairlines as best I could. But you can see where. I found it difficult to blend. And it's very hard to tell whether you actually have blended it in until you've painted it. Because you can see from this image, okay, that it was pretty blended in, but then you get some paint on it and you can see where all of your sculpt work stopped. All right, which is a bit annoying. Um, but yeah, so once I'd got the sides and the back all blended in, well, <laughs> tried to get blended in, uh, sculpted, and of course the top, you know gave him his parting then it was a case of uh, what do i do with the front because obviously the front you know the it's got a big hairline because of that's where the mask was um so i decided to use what i was going to do for a casey custom was use the necka crow uh eric draven hair which is also what i used on the on my desperado uh, el Mar mariachi custom because he has a similar sort of hairstyle and he's got this um piece at the front where it sort of drapes down either side of his face and that's kind of like a separate piece so i had one of those spare so i cut it off that front part and i glued it on and then i was able to sculpt in where it met okay so it kind of gave us this you know just unique little flow gave me sort of a, a more of a natural hairline and then i was able to blend it in now all of that looked good after i'd finished it um 
and then when I came to put the hairpiece onto the head and glue it down, of course, because it was already glued down and it's a rubber piece, once it, when I took the, the piece off and it kind of just sort of flexed, all right, it had been released, so it had this, you know, this spring to it. Putting it back, again, all it wanted to do was just flex out. So I really had to sort of squish it down. And unfortunately, when I did that, um, it sort of broke the, the, the fringe part that I added away from the sculpt work whilst the head was on and fully painted. So I was like, oh shit, I need to bloody get this sorted out. So I had to glue it back and pretty much that's why it looks like an absolute mess <laughs> here and here. So I'm not really happy with how that came out, especially when I was happy before I put it on the head. But um, these things happen. You know, I may go back in and, you know, re-sculpt. I'm not honestly sure because we are confirmed by Randy on the Fushu interview. Um, going to be getting two different unmasked Casey heads, uh, Casey figures, you know, not just a straight re-release of this. We're going to get two different ones and unmasked. So I may not bother. This will work fine for some shots that I've got planned and I'll just wait for the unmasked official version to do some other shots. Um, so yeah, uh, we'll, we'll see how that goes. But in terms of the actual face painting, uh, now I'm pretty happy with how the skin tone came out. You know, I think it matches quite well to the tone of the neck. And I was quite happy with the shading that I gave him. So if I can get a bit more light on there. Okay. So yeah, so I was quite happy with the tones and the shading. Um, but then again, obviously my Achilles heel with face painting is the eyes. All right, now I'd originally filled them with sculpt just so that I could just pull the sculpt away and then not have to worry about painting the eyes. That didn't really work out. Um, some residue was left in there, so once I got it all off, I was kind of like, damn, this doesn't look good. I'm going to have to repaint the eyes. So I gave it my best shot. They're not great. You know, there are 10 times better face painters out there for action figures than me, and especially with eyes. Um, but yeah, so this is just kind of like the, the best effort I had given it. There's a bit of a gloss coat on them, you know. Um, let's see if you can see it better. There we are. But, you know, he looks stoned. He's looking off to one side for some weird reason. But, you know, it still does look like Elias Cortez. Or, and uh, I'm, I'm happy with it. I'm ha more happy with the skin tone than I am the eyes. But, you know, I'll just have to live with it because I'm not going back in. Not going back in to do them. Um, but, yeah, so that's the, uh, the journey I had with the Unmasked Casey. Okay, and personally for me, it's not my best work, but it's work I can live with for some toy photography, knowing now that we are getting an official unmasked head. If, you know, Elias had not decided to uh, to go for it um, and he was still adamant that he didn't want one made of him, then I would have definitely um, probably redone all of the eyes and re the hair to, you know, make it authentic as best I can. But, um, but yeah, so uh, there we are and there we have it. And yeah, that concludes uh, my little custom cave TMNT edition. So what do you think, guys? Um, let me know your thoughts on, on all of these pieces, whether you, you fancy giving uh, uh, some sculpt work a try or if you're going to give uh, Unmasked Casey a go yourself. All right. Um, I say go for it, you know, even though we are getting an official version, then uh, then you leave it, don't worry about it. But, you know, if you fancy giving it a whirl, then, you know, it, it, it can be done. Just obviously, if you want to salvage the mask, really, really heat it up. Um, but just know there's a chance that it may break to get it off. Um, but yeah. Oh, one last thing. Okay, and it's a little bit of news. As you may know, a good friend of mine, Jordan Godson, who's the 3D printing uh, guy on Instagram, goes by the uh, the user handle of. 112 action figure fan i've done some promo work with him he's also done quite a few pieces for me um he also did my shredder uh, secret of the use um, serrated edge crown he unfortunately has decided to uh, close up shop he is no longer selling and printing unfortunately um so uh, i know there was a lot of inquiries and he made a lot of sales regarding the serrated edge crown for this uh, secret of the use shredder and I um, basically got him to sell me the file. So I now am the sole uh, owner of the STL file for the Serrated Edge Crown. Now, um, let me know, which I'll show you right here. It's just here. Okay. So this is a raw print of the crown. Okay. All right. So let me show you, obviously, again, the finished one I have, which is 
here. All right, as you can see, there's my my Secret View shredder. Let's get him in the shop. And obviously, yeah, so when I ordered mine, I, I got him to print me two. And as you know, me and Jordan both designed this, okay? Obviously, because there wasn't a file that existed at the time. So we took a file of the um, TMNT first movie shredder crown, because they had a file of that. And then, of course, we built this using that as a model. Okay, so we both designed this. And uh, he printed it. And uh, so yeah, so this is a unique design. Obviously, there's a obviously a massive chance, which uh, Randy has alluded to in the in the future, that we obviously will be getting a Secret of the Use shredder from them officially. But I know a lot of people have been customising their own, and this has always been the part, especially for me as well, that's been the part that's uh, been the speed bump on how to get around it. All right, which is why I hit him up, and we both designed one. And uh, he's done a few sales, and I know there's been a lot of interest because um, some have actually hit me up um, for it. Okay, but now I am the sole owner of the STL file of this. Um, let me know if there's any interest in in these. Okay, if you're after one, and if there is enough interest, then I will look to getting in touch with another 3D printer and um, getting some more made up for you. Okay, and have them as a prepped or raw file. Prepped being fully sanded down, ready to fit, and painted just like this one. I'm not selling this one. This one's a spare just in case that one breaks. Okay, but I just wanted to give you a look at what a raw file looked like. Obviously, the prep work would be sanding down these sort of edges here. Okay, dremeling this back just slightly more so it can fit snugger on his head, and then obviously giving it the paint job. Okay, so yeah, I'll be doing a poll uh, the, uh, after this video is put up on uh, on my community tab, and just to gauge interest if people are interested in in picking one of these up, and if there is enough, then I'll reach out to some other three D printers and get some more made up and get them out to you. Okay, so we'll let you know how that goes, and obviously I'll provide more information if anything uh, comes of it but just wanted to let you know that yes he's no longer trading he's no longer printing and i now have the um the stl file for this so there yeah, there we have it guys that is it for this video uh, i hope you enjoyed it i know i've got some other bits coming down the pipeline got some other cool videos this you know this isn't just going to be a new live channel there will be other content on i promise you um but i do very much enjoy doing the live shows and thank you so much for joining in on the live shows if you do they're great fun to do it gets to it allows me to engage with you guys a bit more and we get to chop it up about you know turtles the one franchise that i love more than anything and um yeah going over the latest news and thanks to everyone who watched in the watch party of the first movie that was a lot of fun despite the cut off in the middle so it is in two parts and we are going to do secret reviews probably around about the time the toker and raza get released kind of you know get the hype going and uh, get the excitement for that going a bit more but we do intend on doing the three live action and then the animated uh, 2007 version so yeah it's been a lot of fun doing those and yeah so i'm glad i hope you're enjoying those and you know thanks very much so much for all the support and all to the new subscribers that have come on board you've been great and you can see upcoming toy photography using these pieces on tmnt toy photography volume 3 which i'm working on now so it'll be coming very soon um but yeah so until then guys uh, i hope you like this one and please, if you could ever so gently annihilate that like button and sub to the channel, that would be great. You can also check me out on Instagram and Facebook at Project Piper Customs. And that'll be it. That's it for this one. Um, appreciate all the support again. And uh, yeah, see you in the next one, guys. Until next time.